Warhammer 40,000 has some of the deepest lore and backstory content of any fandom out there. So much so that the first time I was introduced to it was actually in the form of a D&D &D game run by a friend of mine. We'll call him Brian. And now, it's up to Brian to deliver a despairing nation from the throes of oppression. Recently, this group of friends came over to do some painting and general hobbying while hanging out in person which we haven't done in a while. We started reminiscing about the Warhammer D&D &D campaign we played almost 10 years ago now, and it got me thinking. It was Brian's birthday recently, so I thought I'd make him something to celebrate that. Plus, I'm running out of room on my shelves. The plan is to custom build our characters from the D&D &D campaign as Space Marines, and set them on an epic sci-fi display diorama. The setting is gonna be some off-world planet, I'm really digging these inspiration images from Adam Taylor of the Exoplanet Metal Refinery. The color palette especially stands out to me, really visually striking. While we build this, let me tell you a bit about the D&D campaign the characters will be based from. We started off as orphan children on the hive world Ravenhold in the Imperium of Man, and we had to navigate our way out of a work camp for a gang that ran that part of the Underhive. Over the course of the campaign, we heard tales of the surface, and wanted to see it for ourselves. So we set out on a long and arduous journey to reach it. There we encountered a space marine of the Flesh Eaters chapter who was waiting to recruit anyone hardy enough to venture to the surface and undergo the trials and implants that would make us into space marines ourselves. Speaking of space marines, we're gonna need to make some miniatures for this display board. Now by my count, there were four of us that made it off the planet. So four is what we're gonna go with. Uh, didn't he die or something? Oh yeah, probably. To make the base of the marine, we're gonna look up the flesh eaters a bit more. This chapter is actually pretty lacking in story and lore, which is probably why Brian picked it in the first place. It gives a lot of flexibility when writing story for the game. Well, for one, they wear all red armor with an accent color of white, a shark jaws type insignia, and a white stripe on the middle of the helmet. Well, since we're making characters, they likely won't have helmets, but we'll see if we can integrate that in somehow. We're going to be using this Posable Space Marine model, which I first learned about from Facility D20's channel about a year back. Also note on the files I use throughout this project, I will not be linking where I got them from for fairly obvious reasons. To get the flesh eaters more represented, I added this little raised detail on the shoulder pad and the belt buckle as well as this different pattern on the chest, which probably corresponds to an earlier edition of Warhammer armor. From there, I set about creating the first character, Clutch Langard, who had a lot of psychic abilities and would ultimately become a space marine librarian, I think. Before I show you how he came together, let's spend a bit more time planning out the display diorama. You might be wondering why I'm making a diorama instead of a piece of war game or D&D terrain in this case. Well, I figured with the amount of actual gaming we do, this will get a lot more use just looking pretty on a shelf instead of being on the table. Plus, you can always set it down in a corner somewhere to use this terrain if needed. In any case, after the base had dried a bit, I set about planning how the layout would look. I found that using XPS foam as a prototyping tool is really good here. The final piece likely won't have any of this foam as it's really easy to dent and chip or break off when handling. But for testing out ideas, it, it's super great. You can see here, I'm using an early prototype of the librarian model I was working on to see the proportions. Once I was sort of happy with an idea in my head, I decided to underpaint the board in a dark red or brownish tone, as I would be placing this aquarium filter on top, and it would be really hard to paint afterwards. The rest of the construction came together pretty easily. For the corners, I used medium graphics chipboard. Thanks, Wylock. I find the chipboard works really well for diorama exteriors since it has this rough texture that doesn't bounce light as much when painted black. And for the front facing facade of the building, I cut up some styrene sheets. This would give me a smoother finish on the building. For some details, I rated my bit spin and found these early prototype parts that I had made for a camera mount a few months back. They have the perfect sort of mechanical sci-fi look, which suited this building well. While waiting for some of the glue to dry, let's tackle more of those Space Marine miniatures. After getting an interesting enough pose for Librarian Langard, I gave him a power sword leaning across his backpack, and his hand posed out as he's evoking a psychic ability. To get him looking a bit more wizardly, I added some loose robes around his um, bottom part and some various knickknacks around his belt. 
like a plasma pistol, some grenades, and a book. He's a librarian after all, right? After printing him out, I then spent the time in fully painting him so that maybe it would give me some insights on what worked and what didn't for the rest of the minis. I really dig the contrast between the deep red and the white for the robes. Turned out nicely. Okay, let's tackle the next character now. This is going to be Chaplain Balon Rex, my character in the campaign. One interesting thing that happened to Rex was he uh, went blind about halfway through the campaign as he sustained a critical blow to the face by an underhive ganger. This rendered him permanently blind and would eventually receive these ocular implants when becoming a space marine, which I'll be representing as a Star Trek type visor. Rex was really into religion and aspired to be a charismatic leader, so a chaplain space marine seemed like a good fit. The recipe for chaplains is just add lots of skulls to every part of their armor, like a lot of skulls. And they also have this really cool mace thing called uh, Crozius Arcanum, which is also adorned with a lot of skulls. Go figure. You know, while modeling all these marines and thinking back to that D&D campaign, it got me thinking. The original campaign was run as a D&D 3.5e module, with a lot of alterations to add in futuristic weapons and flexible skill systems. That makes me wonder though, is there a better system these days that we could use to get a more streamlined gaming experience that... Hang on a second, I'm getting a call. Hey Narb, you know there's a 40k RPG called Dark Heresy, right? But if you look at its mechanics, it's basically just Necromunda with added skills for character advancement. So that begs the question, why not just use Necromunda for your RPG? Each player can make a gang member, and the Game Master can run the plot and enemies as usual. Boss fights should probably come in at around 125% of the player's combined point value. Lastly, for skill checks outside of combat, add in 5th edition's advantage-disadvantage mechanic to make roles against player strength, cool, or will characteristics easier or harder, and you'll have everything you need to run an RPG using Necromunda. Wait, how did you hear what I was saying? That's kind of creepy. You know I talk about this kind of stuff on my channel Dungeon Masterpiece, right? Did you put a link to it in your video description? Anyway, see you later, Narb. Well, as rude as that interruption was, he made some good points. You should go check out more of his videos if you're into D&D. He's got some good wisdom to share. While Chaplain Rex was busy printing, I set about adding more details to the diorama. I wanted this sort of jutting feature with some conduits or pipes coming from the building and going off into nothingness. To accomplish this, I added some of these plastic pieces that came from an IKEA light kit, I think. They're for mounting LED strips onto the underside of a cabinet. The tube itself is likely from an aluminum foil roll, I forget. I have a large bin of tubes that I grabbed it from. I also opted to use a smaller paper straw beside it. And I've realized after building several pieces of terrain with plastic straws that they are terrible for keeping paint stuck to them. They compress and bend when touched, which makes the paint just flake off. Paper straws are a lot sturdier and actually soak up the paint so it's, it's not coming off. On top of the building got a simple sheet of EVA foam that I've engraved with my laser engraver. I'll link a video up above if you want to learn more about that. For the final two marines we have Tech Marine Huck and Sergeant Morg. Morg was a barbarian style character, brutal and vicious in killing anyone that stood in our way. He would make for an excellent sergeant. Now Huck was really into demolitions as well as mechanical tinkering, so turning him into a Tech Marine seemed fitting. I initially gave Morg a normal bolter, but then found a super cool plasma rifle to swap it out with. I also gave him a helmet hooked onto his belt so that I could attempt to paint the chapter's colors onto it. Can't forget some purity seals, which would have been blessed by Chaplain Rex on his chapter brothers. Found a large pack of them on Thingiverse that I used liberally on all the models. For Huck, I decided to make him a multi-part print, cutting off the axe at the hands and the robotic arm. I feared they would be hard to print together on the model. Should be easy enough to reattach with some super glue on the final print. Finally added a customized nameplate to each of the bases as well. Each one is customized to the model it corresponds to. While I was printing off the rest of the miniatures, I also wanted to add some further details to the diorama. I printed off some computer terminals, modeled an air conditioner, some windows, stairs, a railing, and some pipe details. These are all going to be added to my sci-fi decorations pack, linked in the description. So if you want to build something similar following along, you are welcome to do so. 
I feel like these add a certain extra level of realism to the diorama and set the scale just right. Funny enough, painting the marines took the longest in terms of time out of all the steps on this project. I tried to paint these as best as I could with my current skill set, and I feel like I did a pretty good job. Uh, look at Sergeant Morg's eyes. I think these are probably the best eyes I've painted, even though they are a bit googly if you stare closely. It was super satisfying dry brushing some of the gold across the letters on the base. I think I'll add more names to my miniatures from now on. All you patrons better be ready. I took the diorama out to the garage where it's currently about negative 30 degrees Celsius and spray primed it as quickly as I could. From there I dry brushed on some ivory for extra texture and started adding some color hues with my airbrush. I want the colors to be a sort of orange alien landscape fading to a cleaner whitish yellow for the buildings. I asked my three-year-old what color to make the pipe detail and she said blue, so that's what we're gonna do for that. For the next step, I tried something a little bit different. If you haven't seen Nick's video at CC Minis on gouache wash, you should check it out. Basically, it's this opaque watercolor that can be painted on and then reactivated with water to clean off the raised parts. Like an oil wash, but without needing to use mineral spirits. I appreciate the lack of headache after completing the step. Thanks, Nick. After adding a quick decal and dry brushing some more highlights on, it was time to put it all together and see the final result. Thanks so much for watching, and I'm going to go drive this over to Brian's house now because I have nowhere to put it. Hope he likes it. See you later.